Hi, Amy here, and I'm gonna paint another piece today, and I'm not sure how much I'm gonna get done today, but I will document the process as I go. I got some more Dixie Belle paint in, and today I'm gonna try out their Barn Red. Um, never painted anything in red before, so this should be interesting, but I got this little toy chest I'm gonna show you. Okay, so I have this little toy chest right here, and that's the paint I'm gonna be using sitting on top. Um, but the lid opens up, it's just a basic little piece, and so I thought I'd have fun and experiment with the red paint. So then I found, I found another product from Dixie Belle that um, I'm loving. It's, I just coated that entire uh, toy chest with it. It's this stuff, it's, it's clear, and it's called Boss. Now it's it's like a it's it's a primer it's a stain blocker and um, the reason I'm excited about it is I'm gonna show you this piece that I just started working on with um, I started working on this like a week ago but I had problems with adhesion and so I got frustrated and kind of quit for a while because you know once you fall out of love with a piece you got to fall back in love with it again to keep working on it at least that's how I feel so here is this piece but um, so I'm just doing some blending but what I found is when I was spraying it with water. And I had let the paint sit on there for a day. And this is another brand paint. This is an older project that I just ha haven't picked back up again. Um, but uh, I was going to do a blending. But this piece was so glossy that when I started doing the blending, the paint was rubbing off. And so then I got nervous because I didn't prime it before. I just figured, you know, it wasn't too bad. I just want to jump right in and I'd start painting it. I cleaned it, but I didn't prime it or I didn't sand it. Um, in a couple spots, the paint actually rubbed right back off. And not the whole thing, just tiny spots here and there, which kind of ruined the look for me. So I took this, I cleaned the areas that the paint had rub, was rubbing off on, just wiped it back with a, uh, a cloth, got it nice and dry, and then I put a layer of this on wherever the paint was peeling uh, or rubbing away from the surface. I put this on and then let it dry. Oh, it was a couple of days. I, I don't think you have to wait a couple of days, but I let it wait a couple of days because I didn't have time to get back out here. And then I put the paint back on and started doing the blending. The paint stayed. So even though this is, uh, it's uh, blocks odor stains and bleed throughs. So it's kind of like a, sh you know, what you would use a shellac for, but you use this. Well, it has a consistency of kind of like a really runny glue. It's not as thick as glue, but when you, you're brushing it on, you're like, this isn't like paint. This is, this is something different. And what I like about it is, is it makes my, it gives some grip to my surface. And so I don't have to worry about paint uh, peeling up or not adhering. And so I'm not using it just as a primer. I'm using it to ensure, and it's clear. Uh, this piece here has it on it. I'll insert some pictures. It goes on white and then it, it dries clear, but at least now I know I have um, a surface that my paint is gonna adhere to. So now I'm gonna make sure that I'm using it on all my projects just as a safety precaution so I'm not having to start over and stop and start over. And it's cold out here, that's why I'm wearing a jacket. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna use my zebra brush and I have it dampened and not like soaking wet, but I just dipped it in water and um, then I wiped it off with a paper towel. And I'm gonna paint right off this lid first. Some of the stock there. And I don't want to paint right from the lid. I don't want to get, get any goobers. Okay. I've never painted with red before. Your first coat, you want to put your first coat on thin and let it dry so it acts like a crumb coat. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the lid yet. I might do the no stain, the no stain, no pain gel stain, or I might paint it, and I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and just get the base of this painted for now, before our, our little winter storm comes in tonight. I'll turn the heater on out here, just so it doesn't get too cold on it. One thing I have to say, what I like about the Dixie Belle paint is it's, you know, it's a chalk mineral paint, but it doesn't, 
And I said in my last video too, the one thing that I do really like about it, one, the coverage is great. I mean, that's one coat right there. And you don't see a lot of bleed through. Well, you're not gonna see bleed through because I use the boss. But um, you don't see a lot of the wood underneath, even though it's a lighter wood. But um, what I like about it is it doesn't have that chalky look. I mean, it is a chalk mineral paint. I don't know how to describe it, but it, it when it goes on, I feel like, to be honest with you, the texture, I feel like I'm using a latex paint, if that makes sense. It is a little bit, it's a, it's a thicker paint, but when your brush is wet down and damp, it goes on, it feels like a latex. And it's covering wonderfully. And there's no smell, which most chalk paints don't smell. Some that have that, that, you know, like, do have a slight chalky smell to them, but I can't really smell anything with this. And the paint goes a long way. I'm barely dipping my paintbrush into the tub of paint. Barely tipping it in there because I don't want it too goopy. And just, I can tell by the way it's going on right now that I could get away with one coat um, I will probably put two on just to make a, you know, definitely a thicker base. Because I can't decide what I'm going to do with this yet. If I'm going to glaze it, if I'm going to stencil on it, if I'm going to blend colors. I, I haven't decided yet, but I knew I wanted to use the red because this little toy chest kind of just screamed red to me for some reason. So I'm painting it red and then I'm going to try to figure out what jumps at me once I get this part done. I very rarely have a plan from start to finish. I usually start with a base coat and then make up my mind after it dries. I'm barely putting any on my brush. You can just see, I'm just tipping, see a little goop, like glop right there. I'm just putting a little at the end of my brush. So I'm like barely dipping my brush. And no sanding. I did clean it and I did prime it with the boss. I'm about to flip this upside down to paint the underneath. My paintbrush doesn't fit in there. So, not looking good. It's fast. Okay, this is, can you hear that? It's like that very thin particle board, like press board. And a lot of times people won't paint those. They just, they leave them unfinished. Well, if you don't have it all the way up against the wall, then people see the, the color change. I primed this with the Boss. I did put the primer on it, the clear primer, because um, I'm planning on painting it so that it blends in with the rest of the piece. Then it won't stand out like an eyesore that it is different than the rest of the piece. So if these are in good condition, um, and now that I found that Boss primer, um, I'm starting to paint the back of all my pieces as well, uh, just so that they look completely finished. Uh, you know, you do have to disclose, you can't, you can't let, mislead people and make them think the backs are the same material as the front, but at least, you know, it looks nice and it doesn't just stand out as being part of the board. So I do paint these, the, the back particle boards now uh, when I can. Before I didn't just because it, the particle board just like soaked up the paint and it, and it was a waste of money because it was a lot of paint was going on. Uh, 
and uh, it just soaks it up because it's a cardboard. But now that I've, I'm priming it now, it's easier to paint and it paints just like the rest of the surfaces. So that, I think is that, if, especially if you're doing a piece, whether it's a gift or you're selling it or it's for your own home, and um, it may not be like up against a wall where no one's ever gonna see the back. If it's next to a couch, you know, someone sitting at the couch is gonna see the back and it's gonna stand out that it's different if you don't paint it. So, I paint or stain the inside of my drawers whenever I have a piece. Uh, and now I'm starting to paint the backs as well. If it was a solid wood, I'd paint it for sure. But now I'm starting to paint it even if it's the cardboard, just to give it a more finished look. Okay, I'm gonna keep painting this and then I'll come back and I will show you what I do next to this piece. I'm so excited, like I said, I've never worked with red paint before on a piece. Um, it's always gray, browns, whites, tans. Um, I'm working on a blue piece right now that uh, I'm making a new top for. And then that one's, I think I already have it sold. As soon as I get the top done for it, someone's interested in it. So um, I'll show you that piece later on, on another video. But let me go ahead and get this finished up and then we'll decide what to do next. Okay, so so far the steps I've done so far are the primer, the Boss Primer, the clear version of the Boss Primer. Uh, put that on first and then two coats of the Barn Red in the Dixie Belle Barn Red. And then now I'm gonna experiment. I have no idea how it's gonna turn out. I just, I wanted to play. So I'm gonna play with this today. Okay, I'm gonna play with the Dixie Bell No Pain Gel Stain in the color Walnut. And you don't shake it, you have to stir it. Oh, actually, it's, it's like pudding, so I don't think you have to stir it at all. We'll get, let's give this a try. But it's like the consistency of pudding, it is oil-based. So I'm not gonna waste it, one of my paint brushes. So I'm gonna use a sock, and I'm using a black sock just because it's dark stain. So I'm gonna put a sock in my hand. Put a glove on first, because this is oil-based. And I'm just gonna try to richen this a little bit. It's already a beautiful rich red, but I think that if I put this gel stain on it, it'll kind of give it a rich tone. I've taped it off, because right now I'm just gonna try it on the door itself, by itself, just so I can see how I like it, and to show you how it goes on. So that's what I'm gonna do today, is the top of this door. So I put a rubber glove on inside of a sock. You can use a foam brush, a regular brush, or a sock or t-shirt to uh, apply it. And I'm just dipping in. You can see it looks like mud. And a little goes a long way. So I'm just gonna stripe it on. Oh, I forgot to mention, after I did the red paint, I did put one layer of Dixie Belle top coat in satin as well, and let it dry for 24 hours. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can see it's kind of leaving a the brown tone. It spreads like butter. And I'm just gonna spread it across and don't overwork it. Once you've put on a spot, just keep moving on. You don't want to overwork it. And I kind of want a little bit of the red showing through. I don't want it a solid brown. So I'm just gonna keep with my sock spreading this on. And this does take 24 hours to dry. So you don't, once you do this, you can't touch it for 24 hours. Oh, I'm loving this, it's so easy. And I will, oh, I'm standing right from the camera. Sorry about that, I don't know how much you got to see of that since I was standing right in front of it. There you go. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just wiping it on. And the nice thing about the sock 
is I'm able to smooth it out nice and easy and I have control on it. Look at that. And I've never used a gel stain before. I've always been kind of nervous to try it because I see some videos where people talk about how hard it is to work with. This is easy peasy. So I'm going with the grain and I'm not gonna go back over this because I don't want to overwork it. Get my edges. That's it. You know, using a sock, you have so much control as far as no dripping. <clears throat> Just rubbing it on the edges. No dripping, you have control over where it's going. You're just rubbing it on like lotion. Okay, let me zoom in so you can see this. Okay, so they say less is best. So, sorry about the light, that's that big white stripe of light through the middle, that's the ceiling light here in the garage. But, as you can see, it went on nice and smooth. It's got great texture. I'm leaving some of the red streaks in there to see how it dries. I think it really gives it kind of a vintage look. I'm gonna see if I can get it from another angle so I don't have that light in it. But look at how glossy, how smooth. I mean, even though it's, there, there we go, there's a good direction, got that light out of there. You can see it looks like a glass finish. I mean, you don't see the brush strokes. Well, granted, I didn't use a brush, I used a sock, but you don't see the brush strokes in it. I mean, as far as the texture, when you look at an angle, it's nice and shiny. And it kind of gives it that aged look because I put it on nice and thin, so the red shows through. Oh, I love it. And so I haven't decided if I'm going to dark wax down here and up there, or if I'm just gonna do this gel stain, you know, in a lighter version, use it kind of like a glaze down below. I'm still trying to decide, but I wanted to see how well it went on. And this is stinking cool. I love, I mean, just look at that glass finish. So I'm gonna let this dry for 24 hours, and if I wanna go darker, um, maybe have the lid darker, and then have the rest of the cabinet look like this, that might be kind of cool. Um, so I'm gonna let it dry for 24 hours and then decide what I want to do and then I will be back to show you the next step Okay, so I decided to play a little bit more with this gel stain Because I just think it's so cool. I've never worked with gel stain before and I didn't think it was gonna be this easy So I wanted to show you what it does on raw wood since I just showed you on painting I have a spare piece of wood here. So I thought why not play so using my same sock I wanted to show you how easy it is to apply it to raw wood and what nice coverage. Look at that coverage. That is, I'm loving it. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Like I said, this is just a, it's a, a board that I use underneath my furniture to get it off the ground so that I can, um, uh, not get paint on my garage floor. So I always put the legs of the furniture on these blocks. So I figured why not stain it? This does have some odor to it. I do have to say it because it is oil-based. It will have an odor. So you want to do it out in the garage or whatever. But look at this. This is so much, so much more pigment than a regular stain and so much easier to put on. Getting those grooves. And you got that shine. This is the walnut and that little white spot there underneath my hand, if you can see this right there, I just have paint underneath, so it's gonna be a little bit lighter, there's a splotch of spilled paint. But I wanted to show you what it does on a regular board. Look at how nice that finish is. Let me zoom in. Isn't that, doesn't that look wonderful? Um, I'm not so intimidated by using gel stain anymore. So there we go. I just wanted to show that to you real quick because I, I'm having fun playing with this stuff and found something else that I can stain. So, okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And my gel stain, uh, the no pain gel stain is dried. I had so much fun with it. I did the inside too. Look how beautiful that wood looks now. I did the inside as well. Just wiped it on. 
didn't wipe it off, just wiped it on and let it dry. Um, I'm also got a little wood applique that I painted red and then wiped the gel stain on, which will be going right there. You can't really see it right there, but I'm gonna put it right there for just some added interest and I'm gonna attach it with E6000 glue, I believe. But this, this is just screaming, it's a frame. It needs something to do. Uh, I need to do something with it, but this chest is small. So I don't know if someone's gonna use it for a child or if someone's gonna use it for quilts. Um, so I don't wanna make it you know, age specific. So I've been messing around with what I wanna do. So I decided I'm just gonna do a little no pain gel stain. <laughs> Okay, I played around with it and this is what I decided to do. I went with the thinner tape and I decided to do kind of a starburst thing. So I just kind of taped off areas and taped off my border so that I can keep everything in one section. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like um, uh, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And what I mean by that is um, no, uh, the no, no pain gel stain, no pain gel stain wiped off put on, but not wiped off, and then wiped off, you know, just do it over the whole area, but only wipe off certain sections. Uh, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just playing. Like I said, I don't, to be able to sell this, uh, not everybody likes, you know, always distressing and, you know, always having stuff look the same. So I, I wanted to make this look different, but I can't make it age specific because I, it is a small chest. I don't know if an adult's gonna use it for um, blankets or knickknacks or if, if they're gonna put it in a child's room. So kind of wanna make it gender neutral, or not gender neutral, well, I guess gender neutral, but also age neutral too as well. So I got my blue shop towels for when I do the wiping off. I'm gonna pre-tear off two sheets and I just have to make sure that I go every other. And so let's go ahead and start here. I'm gonna put it on. Staying in the triangle. And I wanted to do something with the gel stain because I was having so much fun with it. But I figured why not just keep going with this piece. Okay. And this is the one I wanna make darker so I I might have to put on two coats. Yep. Okay. Now do this section, and I'm gonna end up with a dark red stripe in between each one of the tri triangular sections. That's gonna break it up a little bit. So this is the one I'm going to be wiping off. So I just want to get it on. And I like using the sock because then I can control where it's going. Where a brush, I have less control. Okay, so this is the one that I'm going to be rubbing off. So. I guess I'll just take my rag. This stuff actually is a lot like glaze. dark one. The dark ones I'm probably going to have to do two coats.
Okay, I can probably just go all the way across because I got that tape in there. I'll do my second coat at the same time. Easier to do a larger area and not have brush strokes than it is to do a small area. And this is the wipe off area. Get a clean one. So, I just dropped it in my can. Okay. I wanted to buy a tin sign, a, a tin star. I put a tin star on there. But I wanted to get to working on this. And. I didn't want to have to spend the time to go out and get the star for it. Okay. So the darker ones definitely need a second coat. I could do a second coat on the lighter ones and wipe it off again if I want them even darker. Let it dry so you don't put so it's not pulling itself up so I might have to let that dry a little bit before I can see how it looks this is kind of fun I love this this gel stain is like playing with pudding I'm gonna do a second coat on the, the wipe off one you know I could have just I suppose rolled this on the whole area and then just wiped off the area that I did, didn't want. I guess I could have done that, but I didn't think of it. easier to work with and I think it's easier to work with than glaze. I struggle with glaze sometimes. Okay, now I'm just waiting for this to dry so that I can these dark these one one, two, three darker areas. I'm waiting for that to dry so that I can put a second coat on it. But I don't want to waste another black sock, so I'm actually going to sit here <laughs> until it becomes um, not so shiny and dry to the touch. And I'm going to put a second coat on it, and then I'll come back and I'll remove the tape so you can see how it turned out. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I finished it up. I haven't staged it yet, but I wanted to show you. My battery went dead, so the only thing I've done that you've missed is um, I put the decal on the back using E6000 glue, and I'll show you in a minute, but I use a paintbrush. Warning, <laughs> don't leave your paintbrush on the tube. <laughs> it's glued to it now. But I just use a little paintbrush and um, with E6000 glue, E6000. It won't focus in on it, but it's E6000 glue. And um, I just dabbed with the paintbrush <laughs> a little bit of it on the back of the decal, and I'll show you. I am finished with it. The only thing I have to do is stage it and um, that's it. I'm so excited. It turned out great. The only thing, I, like I said, the only thing I did was take off the tape. <clears throat> okay, well, there she is. Loving how she turned out. Um, the dark triangles is two coats of the No Pain Gel Stain in Walnut from Dixie Belle. And that was two coats. And then the other one is also two coats, the lighter ones, but I wiped it off in between coats. So I put it on, wiped it off right away and then let it dry, put it on, and wiped it off right away. And so the other ones I did not wipe off, so it turned out nice and dark. I did remove the tape right away after I was done with all the coats. I did um, remove the tape because I didn't want it on there for very long because I didn't want it to peel up my chalk paint at all. 
even though I do have a coat of top sealer underneath, I think I might put another coat of top sealer on top just because kids and toys, in case this is gonna be a toy chest. And then the top is the same as it was before. I didn't do anything with that since I showed you last. The other thing, there's the decal that I glued on. And I just used the E6000 glue with the little paintbrush, like I said, and then I painted it red and then I wiped on the gel stain and then wiped it right off and kind of used it like a glaze. So the other thing I have left to do is stage it. Now, since I've never painted anything red, I have nothing red in my house. Uh, I, this is gonna be tricky to stage it to figure out what I'm gonna put with it, but this no pain, still, uh, no pain gel stain was so easy to use. I absolutely love it. You can still see the board down here. This is that board that I did. And I mean, that looks nice. So I'm very excited about it. And it was so easy. I couldn't believe how easy this was. And then I did do the inside. The bottom I did not do, so that's the old color. But inside the door I did put one coat of the gel stain on there. And that's it. And then the back with that particle board, you know how a particle board soaks up the paint. That is one coat. Just one coat is all I put on the back. So just the one coat on the back and it, it turned out great. Love the little handles on the side, those were original. So that's about it. I have to say, you know, I've tried a lot of paints. Um, some professional brand paints I've tried, and then I've tried a lot of the Michaels craft store and like Walmart type craft paints, uh, not craft paints, but chalk paints. And um, I am thrilled to death with this Dixie Belle. I am so excited that I found this company, and um, painting has been really easy, and I think my favorite, I believe it or not, my favorite product of theirs, one, the paint is amazing, but is that, that primer called the Boss, and get, I've got it in clear, which is perfect because I can use it everywhere because it's clear, and it gives my pieces some bite to them so that the paint sticks, and I don't have to worry about bleed through, I don't have to worry about my paint peeling up, um, I love that Boss primer. I'm going to use that on absolutely everything that I do. I'm definitely going to put a coat on there because, you know, a lot of um, um, chalk paint, mineral paints, they always say no prep. But, I, you know, when you put a lot of work into a project, the last thing you want to do is have something go wrong at the end, uh, a bleed through, um, an area that is just a little too glossy and the paint won't stick. Uh, for the most part, paint will stick, you know, if you don't do any prep other than you have to clean. I mean, clean is a mess. You have to clean. But, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm a safety, I'm all about, you know, do it right the first time so you're not having to redo it later. So I am going to be cleaning all of my pieces with the white lightning. Oh, and I was going to tell you, if you, if you never heard of their white light, lighting product, and if you go on their Facebook page, it talks about, you know, you blend it or you mix it in a bucket, a one gallon bucket, and you might be kind of scared off by, I don't want to make a bucket every time I clean something. Make it in a bucket and then pour it into a spray bottle. And then every time you use it, you just shake it because the powder kind of goes to the bottom. Shake it up and label it clearly so you know what it is because you don't want to use this on anything else. But um, so I just put it in a spray bottle and when I clean my, my pieces, I spray it down, I wipe it, and then I take a wet cloth and I rinse it off. And that was it. So for now on, prepping is a must. I'm gonna be doing the white lightning cleaning. I used to use crud cutter, but I really like this white lightning. And um, I'm gonna be using that Boss Clear Primer on every piece I do. And then their paints, um, absolutely love the finish that I'm getting with the paints. It's kind of self-leveling, um, and when it goes on, it goes on nice and smooth, so you don't get the textured uh, brush marks. Now granted, if you're using a chip brush or something, you might get brush marks, it all depends on your brush. But, you know, I use decent brushes, I use, um, I have a Dixie Bell uh, brush um, that I got from their website. I have a Klingon brush. I have um, zebra brushes, and uh, I have Wooster, W-O-O-S-T-R, Wooster brushes. I love all of those. And so if you're using a good brush, you dampen your brush before you start painting. Dampen your brush. Um, you're gonna minimize your brush strokes. You're not gonna have that brush stroke texture. 
and um, and then, I don't know, I'm in love with these products. So I can't wait to post at the end the pictures of the staged, and that's it. Um, this project, start to finish, all Dixie Belle products, and I've never done red before, and I've never done gel stain before, and then I turned around and did that little art design on it with gel stain. I'm so excited about this piece. I went out of my comfort zone, and you don't know how it feels to get out of your comfort zone and have it turn out the way you were hoping it was going to turn out and it kind of makes you more adventurous for the next project so i am going to get adventurous with my next project that is my next project i got that uh, vanity and i think i'm thinking now not sure yet but i'm thinking i'm going to do uh, dixie bell's mermaid and their silver base coat and top coat so i might do like the bottom half silver and have it bleed into the mermaid I haven't decided yet but i'm going to do something out of my comfort zone for that piece so that'll be my next one. Oh, and don't forget to check out my blog if you want to see a lot of these projects um then you know in detail or you know you like reading blogs head over to my blog at www ajsvintagedesigns.com that's my blog and I also have a Facebook page for AJ's Vintage Designs as well and on my Facebook page um, I'm also going to be you know give you some tips as I come across and I'm gonna go shopping I'm gonna be posting some pictures so I'm gonna be using that for like quick you know letting you know things quick and fast and also my chalk tour showed up so I'll be able to do some videos on that too so well, this is Amy with Fashion Toppings and AJ's Vintage Designs. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.